Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. It is great to have you here as we continue on with our From the Depths campaign. We are pretty much right where we left off in the last episode, although I have made a few additions. I want to show you guys just a few things we had going on here. Oh, and before that, a few corrections uh, to a little bit of the lore that I had talked about previously. First off, I had said that uh, Alara really came from Terrus, when in fact, Zinmar was the planet that contains Alara, uh, not Terrus. Uh, however, Zinmar was fully uninhabitable due to a meltdown of something called Varaxia, which was a technological wonder on the planet. Terrace became the home base for extracting the Ilara, with the newcomer faction sending unmanned mining drones. The two planets are so close their atmosphere can connect during different parts of the year, making travel between them rather easy. So we got that going for us. There's a little bit of a correction. And the other one is, when I talked about the, uh, the Yarza, I said they were some sort of mechanical society. I was way off on that. Uh, one, you, they, they also go by Yarzin as another name, but they aren't mechanical at all. They're actually reptilian. I couldn't have been more off base. Holy smokes. And, uh, but they are able to utilize technology well. And uh, there is a lot of biological information about them on the forum, and there are links to that in the description, of course, if you wish to delve in a little bit more to the lore. So let me show you guys a few things that I've done. First off, you remember our fortress was, was kind of on the verge of meltdown there. Uh, I needed to add some more for fortress turbines to get that back up and running, so I did that. Our fortress is good. We shouldn't see that alert anymore. Uh, I actually just finished building this called the, the Heli Radar Simple. Let me give you guys a quick gander on this. This is such a basic thing, but I just wanted a very easy mobile radar that is extremely cheap. This is 25,000 RP. You can see across the board, it's just way cheap. Uh, it gets right around 480 in height and has a basic radar dish on here. In fact, I want to expand this radar dish really quick. I want to make it a little bit bigger. Here we go. Let's make this radar dish duper sexy. Let's just go around here and these bad boys. Mm hmm, mm hmm. A little bit more. Hang on, almost done. Okay. Oh, heck, let's do one more round. Okay, let's just do one more. There we go. Okay, there's the radar dish. Uh, you can see there the, the heli blades were unable to keep it stable as I was actually building just because of the, the weight disbursement across the ship as I was popping more dishes on there, but. We are back up and stable, so this is something we will use just to kind of move around. Uh, you know, we can build some here and there and just move them to a square. You can already see, just by adding more dishes to this radar, it actually expanded us. We can now see, uh, ooh, part of the Dark Angels faction over there. So we'll be using that. We also have another ship. Uh, this is a community ship I brought in called the the Ursine Republic Mal Malursis Motor Torpedo Boat. <laughs> Let's get down there and take a look at this. Let's get it pulled into play here. Where is it? Here it is. Cool looking ship. Uh, it, here are the weapon systems this thing features. It has 3X ramrod, thumper, frag, beam rider missiles, 12 shredder frag missiles, and 4 breacher heat torpedoes, which are 2X HE plus 1X frag at a 1 degree cone. So a highly concentrated cone on this baby. Very cheap ship. In fact, right around the cost of the Bird of Prey. Which, uh, I mean, this looks way more effective than the Bird of Prey. As far as systems on it go, and look at this. This thing goes up to like 20-something in the water. Extremely stable. And uh, it looks like we can even chill inside. It even has some shields, which is something I wouldn't mind adding to the Bird of Prey. So anyways, here's what we're going to do. Let's, let's head over here. Actually, no, let's head down here. We're going to clear out some squares. We're going to take on these vehement seekers a little bit more. What I want to do is this. Go here. We'll go over here if we're still alive. And then we'll come up here and we will fight uh, this this resource zone. We really need another resource zone. This one actually has crystal growth. Whereas our other one has just trace amounts of crystal growth. Essentially, it's so small, it is negligible. Uh, okay, here we go. We, we are ready for some battle. So we have a force count 3, strength 6. We've got a malice... Probably a gripe. Let's see. Oh, a peeve. <laughs> there, uh, two peeves. <laughs> These names are classic. All right, let's get the battle set up going here. Let's see how we fare with our uh, little bit expanded fleets here. Okay, so the Bird of Prey uh, is number one, actually. Select it. Can I please select this? All right. I'm going to put the Bird of Prey way out here. It needs a nice ramp up. And you know what? 
Even the, uh, the, the motorboat, what, what should I call this? I'll just call it the earth sign. Even the earth sign, I'm going to put kind of far back. Not at an altitude of five. It is a boat. It doesn't need to be floating in the air. Oh, another great thing, ladies and gentlemen. A, a huge update came out yesterday, and I say huge uh, because what was included is something called the grid casting system that the developer worked on that replaces the built-in Unity ray casting system, and we will see FPS boosts up to 50%. I was already messing around with the vehicle designer, and I had like 60 or 70,000 blocks in play, and I was still getting like 20 to 30 FPS. It was incredible. So I think that's going to be a huge boon for us. It's going to be great. Hopefully see some better performance. So let's go ahead and start this battle. We're going to go ahead and hop into the Bird of Prey here. And let's just fly down. Uh, well, actually, oh, look at this. So we got all of our ships. So here you can see the Earth sign firing away. Let's see how we do. Interface off. All right, everything missed. <laughs> everything missed. There's the Bird of Prey really far. The Bird of Prey is 1,200. I believe it starts an attack around uh, 900. These missiles are just missing. Boom! Wow, that is an effective sub. And there goes an attack from the Bird of Prey. The Malice is a little bit more difficult to hit here. But I don't think we're going to have a problem between these two ships. Look at this. Boom! Goodbye, my friend. So long and thanks for all the fish. Now I want to watch Hitchhiker's Guide. La la. How are we doing? I think we did it, ladies and gentlemen. We won! Battle complete. Battle finished. Almost right on top. Oh, weird. The Tsunami Genesis has a question mark for their icon. I could have sworn in the previous episode they definitely had an icon. I don't know what happened there. Weird. Uh, okay, battle one. That was that was not too bad. We, we kind of stomped face on that one. Wow, these two ships are like really basic. I am pretty stoked about that right now. And look at this, even though we have a boat, we can still travel out of play at 22.8 meters a second. How great is that? You know what? Let's make this fun. Come on, chase me. Let's get over here. Let's get a couple groups. Let's kick this up a notch, as uh, Emeril would say, as he throws garlic on whatever. Enemies hate that. Vampires hate that. Come and get me, fellas! All right, here we go. Perfect. P perfect. Two battle. Let's get both of these going. Oh, baby. Here's what we're going to do. Um, let's see here. Number one is the Skybird. Okay, I'm going to start the Skybird right here, going this way. Let's get the... Actually, you know what? We will get both of these. No, not five. It's a boat. Scroat, you can remember. Hey, bo hey Scroat, it's a boat. <laughs> okay, uh, I think we're ready. Let's do this. We're going to have these guys coming in from another angle, and that's okay. Uh, I guess I'll be... Oh, we hit ourselves! Oh, no. Never good. Where's the Skybird? Here it is. Let's see what we're dealing with over here. Oh, we have a, just a plethora of stuff. Let's slow speed down really quick here. Look at this. This is the first time... I, I actually don't think we've been shot at yet. This might be the first battle where we are getting shot at. We have an Ardor. We definitely have some bigger ships here. Look at this guy. Uh, the Moxie. You can see some some torpedoes coming out here. This one I'm going to be a little worried about because, again, the Bird of Prey has no shields. This is the Fuhrer. I, I believe I said that right. And this is probably a gripe or a peeve, I think. Yeah, it's a gripe. Okay. Well, let's speed things back up here and see how we're going to do. Please, Bird of Prey, don't get hit. Oh, no. Okay, wait. Slow things back down. Slow things back down. I got to get my guy up in here in the Bird of Prey. Just give me a sec here. Here we go. Warp my guy in there because... Oh, look at the shells just missing. All right, what are we shooting at here? You can see some of the missiles from the Earth sign. But here goes our, our first attack. Looks like we are going after the larger ship. Excellent. Not a ton of damage there. <gasps> Was that us? Oh, no. Oh, my God. Woo! All right, another attack from the Bird of Prey. We've got the Ursine down there, still doing okay. Here we go. What's going to happen? Got a great screenshot there. Ladies and gentlemen, Dingleberry's away. We are hammering away on this guy. The Fuhrer. And when I say hammer, I mean barely touching. He's down by about 100 blocks. 
Uh, Health-wise, we're we're at 100% on the Skybird, and the Earth sign is just a little hurt. We got a lot of stuff going on here. Ooh, you know what? Look how much easier it is to see at nighttime. Wow, Abia, is this? Was this a setting you were able to configure? Okay, here we go. Will we see flares coming out? All right, look at that. We got flares coming out of the Bird of Prey. And as you can see there, uh, well, I don't know what happened, but missiles from the Fuhrer definitely didn't do too much. What? That is so goofy looking. Golly, I love the performance of this game right now. Okay, yeah, we got flares coming out left and right at this point. The flares are working wonders. The Fuhrer is not able to connect, but those cannons, we really need to get some shields on the Bird of Prey. We got a whole cluster down here right now between the Vehement Seekers. We got the Fuhrer, and this is one I said, the Moxie. They are kind of uh, short busting just a little bit. This looks beautiful right now. There goes the Earth sign. I don't know if those are the Thumper missiles. Now, Thumper missiles are essentially like a ram, a spike on the front of the missile. Very cool. And essentially, like the faster you can get those missiles going, the more damage they will do on impact. There's the Bird of Prey. Got those uh, flares shooting out. Now, for those of you who don't know, flares are built to attract missiles. I believe in, in the future, once it's implemented, flares will not work on missiles that use IR seekers or cameras, I believe. Someone correct me if I'm wrong there. Right now, uh, flares essentially attract any kind of missile. But you can see there, look at that. I mean, all the missiles that are shot at the Bird of Prey, just they fly all the way around it. So you can see a nice size difference here. The Fuhrer is a lot bigger than the Earth sign. But these two are really close right now. They, they probably won't be able to connect. Let's make sure, ooh, we, we did take a hit there. We took a good hit. All right, how is this guy doing? How are you doing? He's a little damaged. They're, they're close though, and the problem when you're close and you're using missiles, I wanna say the most ships probably have a default warhead arming time for their missiles. So a lot of times when ships are close, they the missiles will just bounce off. I don't know if you've ever noticed that, but here we go. Taking that Fuhrer out. How are we doing on health? 100% uh, across the board. Very effective. We are doing great so far. Definitely. Now, I, I will be honest, we probably would have lost the Bird of Prey already uh, if we had not placed our player character on there with our huge mechanic skill. Uh, just just the, the repairing prowess that that skill gives us is just unmatched for, for, uh, for instance. Uh, let's see here. Yep, all the missiles going after the flares. I love it. Oh, it's just working out so great. This is a big ship. We've been, you know, hammering away on this guy. There we go. AI is now dead. So I do want to start trying to take over some ships. And oh, you know what? Here's what we will do. Oh my gosh, yeah. We are going to bring the Bird of Prey into... There we go. Well, let's get the battle finished first. And then I'll show you guys what my thoughts are. We're going to rock this out. I'm going to try to capture their resource zone. That is what I want to do. Okay. Um, all right, so I'm just trying to think how I want to do this. I don't I don't want to shoot. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the Bird of Prey out of our fleet here. And I'm going to manually control this. Oh, we're falling! Yay! And uh, we're going to fight the, the resource zone here, and I'm going to try to capture it, okay? That's what we're going to do. We're going to see if we can make this work. Uh, everybody's out of play right now. So let's go ahead and get just a little bit closer. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Okay, the Earth sign took over the name Bird of Prey. Okay, that's all right. Yeah, let's get over there. So far, so good, ladies and gents. We've been doing all right. We're definitely starting to see more. As, essentially, as the heli radar starts moving over, we're going to see more and more. Uh, yeah, take me over there, please. Take me down to a paradise city where the Bird of Prey... Flies up high, looking shitty. Uh, I'm just trying to think here, really, how I want to do this. Let's go ahead and start the setup phase. As long as we don't have missiles coming at us. Now, we may be sacrificing our bird of prey here, ladies and gentlemen. It, it'll be okay. I'd love to take this over. The Scars Outpost. I want to do this. What I want to do, though, I don't want my bird of prey to shoot. You know, I don't want... Well, okay. Well, shoot. All right, I'll just, I'll just take manual control to start. Begin. Let's get in there. Oh, God, he's already shooting. 
Uh, what are you doing? Here we go. Okay, crank it. All right, I am now manually flying the bird of prey. We have definitely already shot. Man, something is really weird about the flight on my ship right now. Uh, what is going on? This is really weird. I'm having a really hard time turning right. Actually, I'm having a really hard time controlling this at all. Something is crazy weird about this. Anyways, that's all right. Uh, let's head on. We're just going to... Why is it still shooting? Stop shooting! Yeah, I'm having a crazy hard time controlling this. This is strange. Like, all of a sudden, the flight pattern on this bird of prey is... Oh, it's because I added healing tentacles on there. I bet... Ah, and why is my ship still shooting? Off, 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 off. There we go. I forgot to turn the AI off, ladies and gentlemen. That was totally my bad. Oh, man, we already killed it. <laughs> Dang it. Jump out. Maybe we can capture it. Oh, my gosh. That was just... What in the world? Darn it. Well, shoot dump. Okay. I don't know what shoot dump means, but uh, let's do this then. Okay, let's go ahead and get these guys back together. Unfortunate. You know, I wonder if I could keep these separate. And, and like, why don't we own this square? Okay, here we go. We're going to own this square. Bird of Prey, uh, the Skybird will be good here. Ursine is going to sit here for a little bit of protection while our heli radar moves over. And then what we're going to do is come down to our fortress. Let's get the fortress spawned in here. There we go. And yeah, so when I'm talking about sky turbines earlier, here's what I did. This is uh, fortress turbines, not sky turbines. I essentially added a bunch more on here, which added a power draw for frame was around 4.8. And after adding about 10 more turbines, it is now 2.2. And you can see there we now have around 1,300 uh, spare energy, which is crazy. So let's do this. Let's go for the ships here. Let's get ourselves a sea skipping suckler. It's been tried and true, my friends. We've been using this baby quite a bit. Let's load her in. And since we do have a good bit of crystal, let's go ahead and expand on our own base with some more repair tentacles. Let's see. We'll just add a few more. I don't want them to get in the way of the spinning of the dock, though. Here we go. Not bad, not bad. Gonna look a little ugly. We'll, uh, we'll put some on the underside as well. Like that. And the Sea Skip and Suckler is already built. Here it goes. All right. So this is a hydrofoil craft. For those of you who haven't seen it, we use a nice set of hydrofoils on the bottom. This was a ship I built, I think, in Season 2. And it's just worked. It's worked really great. It uh, I call it the, the Sea Skip and Suckler because of what you're seeing here. It'll skip and it'll suckle. This is essentially how it, how it traverses the world. So let's go ahead and pull all. And we're going to move the suckler out of the fleet here. Let's get it selected. And we are going to move this straight into the resource ring right here. Let's 10 exit. Let's see. Not bad. So the suckler moves at a 13.5. Okay, the suckler is almost there. We uh, I've been 10 xing it just to let it get across here and get to the resource zone. In the process, of course, we've been accruing quite a nice amount of... Wait a second. I feel like we are getting resources pretty quick. I, I want to show you something I noticed, by the way. When I first loaded up this game, the enemy growth factor had had changed itself and was at a 2.0. And the resources given by destroying enemies was all the way at max. And the uh, enemy design difficulty was also all the way maxed out. I, I don't know how that changed. Something between uh, when I last saved and when I reloaded, everything had just moved itself. Um, I was just making sure... I just wanted to check again to make sure our sliders were still in place here. So here's what this looks like. This is really cool. When you mouse over resource zone, you, you get these, these boxes, those green boxes under it. When our resource suckler here gets within range, a 4 exit, you'll notice these boxes start to shrink, and that essentially means we are gathering those resources. And you'll notice at the top right, the numbers start going down. So you can see there, numbers are now dropping. We are gathering all of the resources available. In fact, that we are getting a ton of crystal. And essentially, once we suckle this dry, uh, we will be left with just the growth factor that we are able to drink from this zone. So this is pretty cool. All right, we are we are good to go. Ladies and gentlemen, we will stop this episode here. This has been a good one. I've already had five or six ship submissions, which is great. So we have 
quite a few fun ships we can take a look at. And like I said, you know, I've already built a couple ships. And uh, going forward, it, you know, at least while we're in the small to medium range ships, I, <clears throat> I definitely, excuse me, want to focus on, you know, building some more. Maybe, maybe one ship a week, maybe two. We'll see how things go. So, ladies and gents, if you liked the episode, definitely give it a thumbs up. Let's me know you still uh, are interested in enjoying things, and uh, I love that kind of thing. And, of course, if you have any comments or suggestions, feel free to drop those. And until next time, ladies and gentlemen, looking forward to seeing you in the next episode. Hope you all have a great one. Take it easy and stay classy.